Good evening. Uh, before we get started, I'd uh, like to welcome Jason Howard from uh, Stone Creek Church in Milton to uh, lead us in invocation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council. Uh -huh. We bow our heads. Uh, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads tonight at the start of the city council meeting out of respect for one another, uh, also out of the common belief and desire that this community would continue to grow and flourish under the charge of the council and the mayor. Uh, Father, I'm just thankful uh, for the men and women who give their time. They also use their unique skills and abilities to govern over our city and guide and direct the resources to accomplish great things in Milton. Uh, I pray for your guidance through them and your blessing over them as they make the, the decisions tonight for our city. And, and also say just an extra prayer uh, for the students, the faculty across our school system in the city of Milton as they prepare to head back into the classrooms uh, in a week from now. And, and Father, I pray all of this um, just as a pastor, uh, but also as a member in this community. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jason. Thank you. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Milton City Council for Monday, August 5th, 2013 to order. Can the city clerk please make announcements and call a roll. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll be happy to call roll for the August 5th, 2013 regular meeting. I would like to remind those in attendance to please silence all cell phones at this time. Those in attendance this evening who would like to provide public comment either during the public hearing or during the call for public comment, you are required to complete a public comment card prior to speaking on an item. There is no public comment for consent agenda items or items under first presentation. Those called to speak will be taken in the order that the speaker cards were received by the city clerk prior to the beginning of tonight's meeting. All speakers will please identify themselves by name, address, and organization, if applicable. The city council may allow public comment on either an agenda item or general public comment from a representative of such an organized group or association, provided that such an individual shall file a notarized affidavit that they have the authority to speak on behalf of said organization on a form provided by the city clerk prior to the agenda item being called. Demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited, so please refrain from any applause, cheering, booing, outbursts, or dialogue with any person speaking. Please show the same respect to the person speaking that you will expect to receive yourself. Anyone in violation will be asked to leave. As I call roll this evening, please confirm your attendance. Mayor Joe Lockwood. Here. Councilmember Karen Thurman. Here. Councilmember Matt Koontz. Here. Councilmember Bill Lusk. Here. Councilmember Bert Hewitt. Here. Councilmember Joe Longoria. Here. Councilmember Lance Large. Here. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and uh, I want to welcome everybody here tonight. We appreciate you being here. And uh, we'll open it up with uh, the, the city clerk. will please call the uh, next item, which is approval of the meeting agenda. Next item is approval of meeting agenda. This is agenda item number 13174. Okay. Um, I know we need to add a executive session to discuss land acquisition. Is there anything else from council or staff on the agenda? Mr. Mayor, go ahead and put the litigation on there as well. Okay. Uh, if we could add an executive session to discuss land acquisition and litigation along with our agenda. Mayor, I have a uh, motion and second. Mayor, I move to approve the, uh, the agenda as prepared by staff with the addition of an executive session for land acquisition and litigation. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Councilmember Lusk, second by Councilmember Thurman for, to approve our agenda with the addition of executive session for land acquisition and uh, litigation. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <clears throat> Any opposed? That's unanimous. Next item we go to is public comment. Do we have any public comment? We do, sir. Okay. Let me uh, read the rules. Public comment is a time for citizens to share information with the mayor and city council and to provide input and opinions on any matter that is not scheduled for its own public hearing during today's meeting. There's no discussion on items on the consent agenda or first presentation from the public or from council. Each citizen who chooses to participate in public comment must complete a comment card and submit it to the city clerk. Please remember this is not a time to engage the mayor or members of the city council in conversation. 
When your name is called, please come forward and speak into the microphone, stating your name and address for the record. You will have five minutes for remarks. Do we have any public comment? Yes, sir, we do, and that would be Mr. Hampton Logan. Good evening. My name is Hampton Logan. I reside at 14790 Glen Creek Way in Milton. Uh, the purpose of my coming to, before the council today is I uh, got a mailing from the uh, city of Milton recently, dated July 22nd, 2013, regarding the uh, various types of exemptions, homestead exemptions. I was not aware that there was uh, a full value exemption for people over 70. I am one of those fortunate people over 70. And I uh, went by the finance office today to see about applying for that. They said that that date was uh, 531 13 was the date to uh, have done that. I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware of the situation as far as the dates and the full value exemptions for people over 70. Uh, at that time, I talked with uh, uh, Stacy Anglis, and she said that the only way she thought that it might possibly be waived in my situation is to uh, bring it before the city council, and that's what I'm doing. Is I'd like to uh, request your uh, assistance in getting a full value exemption for my 2013 property taxes. Okay. And um, I don't know how you go about that, but well, Stacy's here, so she... <laughs> as, I, as I said in the rules, we, we can't discuss items now. This is a chance for you to let us know, but we can certainly get with our staff online, offline right. and discuss that. And I'm sure they have got your contact info or, or whatever. We'll be glad uh, so to. So they can contact me when you decide. Yeah, we'll be glad to okay. look into that. Thank you. Council, I, you know, what kind of time frame? Well, if we've got one council, of, if we've just got one public comment tonight, unless the council objects, I, I just wanted you all to be able to say I could waive this deadline. Unless you all object, I'm prepared to do it, and, and we'll move forward. We know there won't be any problem. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Good deal. Thank you. Was that easy? Thank you. It was worth your while. It was worth. Take your time frame. It was worth. It's worth your while to come. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do we have any other public that, comments? That's all, sir. Okay. Uh, we can move to the consent agenda. You wouldn't mind reading that out. First item, approval of the July 15th, 2013 regular city council meeting minutes. Agenda item number 13, 175. Next, approval of the financial statements for the period ending June 2013. Agenda item number 13, 176. Our next consent agenda item, approval of an amendment to a professional services agreement between the City of Milton and Michael Elliott, Ph.D., for the purpose of providing facilitation services for two sub-areas within the Route 9 North Visioning Study Area. Agenda item number 13, 177. Next, approval of a construction services agreement between the City of Milton and Engineered Restorations, Inc., for miscellaneous bridge repairs. Agenda item number 13, 178. Our final consent agenda item this evening is approval of a construction services agreement between the City of Milton and Strickland Pipeline and Construction Inc. for 137 Bethany Road Storm Drain System Improvements. This is agenda item number 13, 179. Okay, do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second the motion. A motion by Councilmember Hewitt. Second by uh, Councilmember Lost to approve the consent agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> That's unanimous. Okay, tonight we don't have any reports or presentations, so if we can move to our first presentation. Sudi, if you wouldn't mind reading the first presentation. Consideration of RZ 13-13. Manor Bridge Road, South Side, and Hamby Road, Northeast Side, by Westminster Place, LLC, to rezone from AG1 Agricultural to CUP Community Unit Plan to develop 59 single-family, one-acre lots. This is agenda item number 13180. Excuse me. Do you have a motion? Mayor, I move that we uh, accept the first presentation items as read by the city clerk. Second. <clears throat> Is that a motion by Councilmember Longoria? Second. 
second by council member Coots. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Mr. Okay. Mayor, before you move on with that, I know that that was just a first presentation. It might be worth just noting for the record that their request is to withdraw. So even though you've read it and agreed to the first presentation tonight, mm -hmm. it'll come forward next at the next meeting with the request to withdraw. Okay. Just in case anybody from the public is watching this okay. particular application. Okay, everybody got that? Okay, um, we'll move on to unfinished business then. Our first item is consideration of an ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Milton, Georgia to establish the ad valorem tax rate of the City of Milton for fiscal year 2013 and for other purposes. Agenda item number 13, 170. First presentation was heard at the July 15, 2013 regular City Council meeting. Ms. Stacy Inglis. Good evening, Mayor and Council. What we have before you tonight is um, the total tax digest of $2,117,097,860. Total taxes levied will be $9,246,657. Of that, property taxes would be a little over $8.6 and the motor vehicle taxes would be almost $600,000. Um, the millage rate that we are uh, requesting to be approved tonight is 4.731 mills. That's the same millage rate we've had since the city's been incorporated. Um, there's not a requirement to have a public hearing because there is not a tax increase. Each year we've had to advertise a tax increase due to reassessments. The reassessments have actually gone down this year. However, they were pretty much offset with additions um, to the digest for um, new buildings or um, subdivided properties, things like that. So, um, so that's why there is no public hearing um, that we usually have. So what we have, um, we're just requesting that you approve the millage rate. Okay, any questions? Okay, I'll open up for a motion. Mayor, I move that we uh, approve an ordinance of the Mayor and the Council of the City of Milton, Georgia to establish the ad valorem tax rate of the City of Milton for fiscal, fiscal year 2013 and for other purposes, agenda item number 13170. Second. Okay. A motion by Council Member Longoria, second from Council Member Large. We need discussion or hearing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, we can uh, move on to new business. The city clerk would please call the first item. Consideration of a professional services agreement between the city of Milton and Joseph D. Young, PC, for assistance with the design of a proposed opportunity zone within the city. This is agenda item number 13181. Mr. Chris Lagerbloom. Uh, Mayor and Council, I'm going to present this for uh, Bill O'Connor tonight, who would routinely present this as an economic development initiative. Um, as you're aware, opportunity zones exist in Georgia, and you have to apply for an opportunity zone if your um, city or area meets a certain criteria. If awarded an opportunity zone, we really use it as an economic development tool in our toolbox um, to try to recruit uh, business to a certain area within that opportunity zone. And what it amounts to is the ability to collect from the state a job tax credit in the amount of $3,500 per job created for a total of five years. Um, we've not had an area that has qualified for even consideration for an opportunity zone. Um, as of the last census, we now have an area because of its adjacency to a census tract that um, is in Forsyth County that causes us to now qualify. There's really no harm in trying to trying to get this. There's actually just real benefit to it if, in fact, we have it. I mean, there's no downside to it, per se. Um, it is a bit of an uh, interesting path to navigate through to get to the point that you can actually be approved for one, and there was some legislation that existed in this last um, legislative session that added a second level of approval needed to be able to get um, the opportunity zone. So um, having done this and, and uh, or having asked around and talked around and worked through this, um, it's appropriate to find somebody who is an expert at putting these packages together the first time we do it um, and to more or less assist us in, in making sure that we cross all our T's and dot our I's. And, um, Joe Young, former uh, attorney to uh, Governor Barnes, who was very involved when this legislation was implemented in the first place and kind of the industry knowledgeable lawyer that, that deals with it. Um, is who I'm proposing that we consult with at this point to put our application package together and, and submit it to the state for their consideration. The area that uh, 
if approved, the area that would qualify as the opportunity zone um, would be in this Deerfield Parkway web road corridor kind of leading up towards um, the county line and east of Highway 9, so not Kirby Creek but across the street. And again, it qualifies because of its adjacency to a census tract that's just over the border in Forsyth County. Um, the neat thing about having an opportunity zone is if, if you have one and can attract good business to your area, what they have found is that you can put an opportunity zone in a place nobody wants to be and they still won't go there. But if you put an opportunity zone in a place that's already attractive for people to be, they're really used as a good tool to attract um, good business to that particular area. Case in point is GM in Roswell, for example. That was an opportunity zone that GM landed in, which is why uh, Roswell won out and, and had that land in a very good place designed for its type of use and created a good many jobs. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Yes. And the only question I have, obviously, <clears throat> By selecting opportunity zone, that doesn't put any additional restrictions on our current form based code in the area? It does not. It so does. they can work in conjunction with each other? That's correct. Right. Yeah, as you note, I just read where the city of Atlanta was granted three opportunity zones just recently. Mm -hmm. they're, it's, they're highly attractive to get. And if you can get one, you kind of celebrate the fact that you got one because it's just that advantageous to, to draw good business. Any other questions? Then? Okay. I'll open up for a motion. Make a motion to approve agenda item 13181. Second. We've got a motion for approval from Councilmember Hewitt, second from Councilmember Longoria. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. We, the timeline should be about five months. Four to five. We try to expedite it and do four, but they, they run four to five months start to finish. Okay. Um, Sudi, if you call next item. Next item, consideration of the approval of an addendum to the original Safe Build Georgia, Inc. 2010 contract. This is agenda item number 13182. Mr. Chris Lagerblum. Mayor and Council, this uh, addendum to this contract is brought forward because of sheer volume that we've been experiencing in the um, plan review and building permit issuing department here in Milton. This is something that because of the um, what appears to be a slight tick back in the economy and people really wanting to be here and wanting to build here, um, we've had uh, permit applications that have far surpassed by July 1st of this year what we had in all of calendar year last year. Um, we renegotiated and met with the, the uh, private provider we have that does these things, Safe Build, and are seeking your approval to allow two things to be amended to the contract. Both of them are in, in Milton's benefit. Um, and one is that uh, we're going to separate the building permits from the business licensing function, and they will take over and staff um, the permit techs necessary to issue building permits. That'll be an assistance to our staff um, and is something that they will put in place here in Milton on a full time equivalent basis. The second thing is to amend the contract so that when uh, more than $750,000 worth of invoice revenues have been received by Milton. As you know, this is a revenue sharing contract. The revenue share um, increases for Milton as opposed to us being on a 70-30 split. Um, once that dollar figure is reached, we're kind of uh, in the mindset of both sharing and the success when that success level is reached and the revenue share changes to 65-35. So by approving this addendum tonight, what you actually are doing is allowing an additional 5% of the revenues to come to the city and allowing Safe Bill to staff a position that currently has a city person, a city position in it. So two good things that, that benefit Milton, and that's what's accomplished by this contract <coughs> addendum, if you approve it. Sure. Any questions? I haven't looked out. How often have we gotten close to or been past that 750000 mark? We haven't hit it yet? This is the first time. Um, yes, this is the first time. First time we've even been close to it, and to be close to it by July, on July the 1st is... is um, says something to the, the, the volume that's sure. occurring and the number of people that want to be here. Okay, yeah. there you go. Wade, you happy with that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and this goes into effect immediately? Or oh, yes. Yeah, okay. they're, they're interviewing people now to place in that position. And, uh, right. Um, so this isn't for 2014 that we have to get to it. It's like right now. This will go into effect now. Okay. That's correct. So we get that additional 5%. That's correct. Right away. Gotcha. 
Yes, it'll be in the additional five percent will be in place through the September through September the thirtieth. Gotcha. And then it will track along with our fiscal year. That makes more sense than tracking on the calendar year because it's just more predictable to budget for. Sure. All right. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> Not a little through a motion. Mayor, I'll, make, I'll move to approve an addendum to the original Safe Built Georgia Inc. 2010 contract, agenda item number 13 182. Second. I got a motion by Council Member Wasp, second by Council Member Kutz. For approval, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. The uh, City Clerk will please. Sound the next new business item. Our final item this evening, consideration of the approval of a second amendment to the Intergovernmental Agreement, IGA, for the extraterritorial provision of sewer service by Fulton County for property located at 13175 Hopewell Road, Milton, Georgia. This is agenda item number 13183. Mr. Chris Lagerblum. Uh, Mayor and Council, this is before you tonight because of a rezoning that you all approved at your last meeting, um, the property that was on Hopewell Road that was zoned for residential at a density of less than one unit per acre. Um, part of that was the requirement that sewer would be extended to that property so that that uh, neighborhood could be built. I think extend maybe is a strong word because the pipe went through the property. There just was no manhole to it. So um, the pipe that crossed over the property um, allow them to use it is probably a better characterization I guess I get uh, Thank you. iffy about the word extend <laughs> so um, having said that uh, that action and that rezoning was only so good as to get us to the rezoning but not so good as to get the IGA that we have with Fulton County now to match what you did last week that's what this amendment does is that it would include that parcel on that map as sewerable um, there's one thing that, uh, you know, we, that, that was basically where Ken and I started this whole journey, was to just get an amendment that would allow this one parcel as sewerable. Um, the Fulton County Attorney has offered up a second option so that if and when these things occur in the future, um, there's maybe an easier way to get the map amended. And I'm going to let Ken explain that. But I, the reason I wanted to bring that forward and let you all make a policy decision is because I can't, I want to make sure I don't all of a sudden grant or consent to too much um, ability to modify the map. I know that there was this question as to, you know, should it be modified, should it not at one point? And I wanted to kind of gauge what latitude you all want as a council. Fulton's kind of ready to give us all the latitude in the world if we want it. Um, but I'll turn it over to Ken and let him explain the second amendment that's been brought tonight. Both of these amendments, by the way, accomplish the same thing with respect to this Hopewell Road property. One just stops it, adding Hopewell Road to the map. That, that parcel to the map. The second one adds it to the map and takes it one step further, and that's what Ken's going to explain now. Everything <clears throat> the city uh, manager just said is accurate. Uh, we did, in fact, provide a proposed modified sewer IGA to Fulton County, um, and they provided some feedback. Two things. First of all, the map that you have in your packet, um, hopefully you'll, you're able to see all this. I will tell you that it's a little... Um, it's not as polished as we would like, and let me explain why. The map that, that we use to, to, uh, to, to reflect sewer, the sewer boundary in Mills, is actually prepared by Fulton. So I took there the existing map and sort of just added this additional parcel and gave it to Fulton County and said, please update your professionally done GIS map to reflect that. So I want to put that on the record now because if you do approve one of the two IGAs I'm going to go over with you, please know this is attached. This won't be attached forever. Eventually a nicer map that actually does not look as bad as that one will be attached. We're just waiting for Fulton County to generate it. On to the substance of what Chris was saying. We, the, the, the IGA that I proposed to Fulton County is what's in your agenda packet. It basically says this new map will be the map, period. That's customary the way we have done these IGAs in the past. This is the new map. If it's not on the new map, it can't be sewered, et cetera. Upon providing that, the Fulton County attorney basically said, hey, that's great, but for purposes of trying to ensure that every time the city council uh, wants to potentially allow or authorize access to a new parcel, why don't we just structure the IGA such that Fulton County agrees and whatever 
Milton wants to sue her, you all adopt a new map by way of a unilateral resolution and just provide it to us. And that'll be your new sewer boundary. Now that's not gonna put an obligation on Fulton County to extend sewer. And when I say I'm talking about the physical construction work of extending a pipe or a undertaking a public works project, but if you wanna authorize a new parcel, you just tell us. And if we can otherwise conveniently provide access to that parcel, we'll do it. That is the one I handed out to you this evening. That is the one that has the red verbiage that does exactly what I just said. It says that in the future, if Milton wants to, to run or provide sewer to a new parcel, you need nearly to do it by way of a resolution. Provide that to the Fulton County Manager and the Fulton County Public Works Department and voila, that's the new sewer boundary in Milton. Remember, all we're doing is an authorization. We're agreeing to allow them to sewer parcels. Whether or not they can do it technically, feasibly, whether they have the infrastructure in place, that's up to them. So I guess what Chris was alluding to now is you have two choices. You have the, we approve this IGA, it modif of course, forgive me for that. Yes, that's of course the case. You have three choices. You can do nothing, neither of these. Putting aside though, we're not gonna do anything this evening. If you choose to take affirmative action, you have two choices. You can either approve the IGA in your agenda packet that says here's the IGA and in the future we want it to require bilateral approval by both governments before we do any modification to the map. That's in your packet. Or you could approve the IG I just went over with you that says we will have the authority in the future to unilaterally modify the sewer map. That's the policy issue. Ken, I did not get a copy of your. Forgive me, I thought I handed those out. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Everybody else has one. So, but if we approve the unilateral decision, then that does not approve this particular consideration for it us? It absolutely does. It, 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 does. it still modifies the map to accomplish what you all wanted to accomplish this evening with respect to that single parcel. Okay. But it also says going forward, the map will be as you authorize it to be, and Fulton County does not have to reciprocate. So the motion should be the approval of, if we were to, the motion should be the approval of what's considered before us as well as the unilateral option. Well, the, the one that I just provided to Council Member Thurman or the one that I physically handed out, <coughs> we would just need to say, I make a motion that we approve the amendment uh, to the sewer IGA as handed out by the city attorney this evening. That would, and, and that accomplishes everything you wanted to accomplish. <coughs> Okay, so I guess what's the downside to the second one, and I'll throw this out there, maybe the downside is that at some point you guys decide you want to do something on a piece of property that's going to require sewer, and if the, for whatever reason, I mean, you can't take the politics out of politics, if they get in the way and all of a sudden Fulton says, well, we just don't consent to that, you know, you could, you could be wanting to do something in your city that Fulton could say, well, we're not going to allow it because you, we're not going to extend the sewer there. That's the downside of that's the downside of keeping them in the loop now that they've kind of consented to being out of the loop. Um, but being out of the loop, now the, the ownership of the sewer pipes in Milton rests solely in the hands of whatever the, whoever the sitting council is. Well, <clears throat> now with each one of these uh, resolutions that we're forwarding, including the last one that we did here a few months ago, are we providing a legal description, the actual parcel? Does that go along with it, or are you just providing a, a it, it, it doesn't, but I will tell you that these maps are parcel-specific, the ones that have been put together. They're done with that amount of, of and so that's why this one is so unsatisfactory, uh, but the one that will be generated will be parcel-specific. It is down to the parcel count. Anyone else? Uh, so we, based on one that was handed out. Yes, sir. Moving forward, we council could approve our the addition of a parcel uh, that would be available for sewer. Yes. But and Fulton County would add it to the map just because of that action. But there still has a another step that that parcel would have to still get approval from Fulton County Public Works terms of capacity for treatment and such. So they still, just because it's on the map doesn't necessarily mean they must, well, be feasible in terms of 
That's right. Cost. That's right. Yeah, this is this these IGAs are one level of approval. This gets Fulton in the door, if you will. But right. with respect to the right the, the infrastructure, that's between. But the that would be between the property owner, uh, developer, whatever, and the, and the actual Fulton County and the public works to do. Right. This keeps an action of the board of commissioners, whether objective or out of spite, gets them right. out of the way. No, I, I think it sounds like reasonable. And I will tell you that uh, just a few minutes ago, I did receive an email back from the Fulton County attorney that said that the version I just handed out to you looked satisfactory to him. Um, I would I would support the um, the the one that's in our uh, packet. Um, I was quite comfortable with the map that we approved a couple of years ago with the judge's help, um, but with the circumstances of the of the line running through the property, I mean that just makes sense but one of the things that, that those of us when we approved that map talked about is you know that was the map and we're not going to keep adding to it um, and it seems this is the second second time we're, we're looking at adding to it so I would support this particular one because of the because of the circumstances with the line running through it but but not really interested in the in the alternative just for the record okay anybody else Karen? Th this alternative we would still have to vote each time that we wanted to allow it, it would just not have to go back to Fulton County after we had approved. It just doesn't have to go through a double approval where Fulton County is going to automatically, as has basically said, they're going to approve anything we do. So there's this, just a time consuming. Yeah, I think from the Fulton County attorney's perspective, it's simply to, to avoid having to take it to his board of commissioners. But you would, as you just said, have to approve we it. We would have to approve it. So this right. doesn't, this doesn't give anyone make any promises to anyone in the future as far as any additional it would still have to always come before the Milton City Council for approval regardless yes ma'am Fulton County in practice on the ones we've sent down there so far which haven't been many have, have approved these on their consent agenda so, so they, they, have, yeah. they have they have not been discussed or sounded and it just takes it that one last step out of there so I guess to totally up to y'all I don't care to, what the other from McDermott's point basically this is not opening up saying we're adding sewer to unsewer parcels at this point it just uh, um, cuts out the step of if we were going to Fulton County getting their approval coming back it would we would make that decision and then it would Fulton exactly County right. would already be okay. Yes, Okay. And again, I'll just be clear so that it's clear for this record that, you know, we didn't concoct this. This is something that the county attorney asked us to bring forward. So this is something the representative of the county is asking you all to consider. We, we When we went in and pursued this, we didn't go looking to even have this secondary discussion. But when it presented itself, we felt as though we owed an obligation to give him an answer. And to give him an answer, we had to bring it to, to the council. That's a good point. That's a, that's a great point. That's ac absolutely accurate. Well, I guess the bottom line, I can open up for, you know, <clears throat> either a motion based on, on um, how this uh, item is written or if it want to be broken down into this one particular parcel and then look at this other issue at another time. We could, sure. if, if council wanted to. I'm fine either way. So I'll just, uh, if there's any other discussion or somebody wants to make a motion and discuss it. Yeah. I mean, I'm all for efficiency. I, I, I think the unilateral, unilateral option is the best way to go in my mind. Just obviously <clears throat> to make it easier on staff from a process perspective and having to go to Fulton County if ever something comes forward in the future. I think that makes sense to me. Is that your motion? Uh, I can make a motion if you like. Yeah. Uh, so if I were to make the motion, I say, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the unilateral option of the Second Amendment to the Intergovernmental Agreement for the Extraterritorial Provision of Sewer Service by Fulton County for property located at 13175 Hopewell Road in Milton, Georgia. That was handed out by the City Attorney. That was handed out by the City Attorney on this day. Um, agenda item number 13183. Second, second. motion. Okay. We got a uh, motion by Council Member Kuntz, second by Council Member Lusk. Any discussion? And I certainly understand your. Well, you could vote against that. Yeah. Only because if, if it didn't go in total. But, uh, to that point. Um, okay. Uh, is there any discussion on this? Not. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Let's. Uh, <coughs>
six approve and uh, one against. Okay, thank you. Council Member Hewitt. Okay. We'll, uh, move on. That was a little easier, wasn't it? In the last meeting? Um, I, uh, I got talked in. This is not, I haven't made this public yet. Chris knows about the, not what I'm about to say, but the, the, um, the challenge. I got talked into uh, running the mayor's challenge race against Mayor Bellisle. <laughs> and uh, I guess the good news for me is his kids are all betting on me. Um, <laughs> except he said his youngest daughter. She said she didn't know any better. Um, but the uh, problem I've got, I'm uh, taking my son to college that weekend. I just found out from my wife that so I've got to have somebody stand in for me, so you know I can throw it to the mayor pro tem there. Last term, you guys want to do that, but I, I did want to. Though I know we've got some of our staff running, and I'm going to need a replacement. So I'm gonna throw How far it. is it? So that is a, a three. Three miles. Three yeah. point one. Yeah. Ooh, a five k. So, and I did, I did get him to promise it. If either one was ahead, they'd slow down at the end. So it was just, you know, it didn't look like a runaway. So, uh, so anyways, I, I don't need an answer tonight or whatever, but I want to throw that <laughs> out. That I'm going to, the other one have to fall down. I'm going to look for, uh, for uh, <laughs> somebody to, to uh, represent <laughs> me there on that. I thought I, I know Chris has got some staff members that are going to run. So. Let me get back with you on that. One. All right. All right, any, uh, anything, council got anything they want to share? Yeah, um, Friends of the Milton Library is having our first book sale coming up this Saturday at the Old Blind Dog Pub from the hours of 9 to 2. And uh, what it looked like was going to be a, a uh, we weren't sure how good of an event it was going to be. We have over 3,000 books collected. Um, we have classics, there's military, there's novels. It's a great collection. And um, so we're trying to raise some money for the friends to support the library. Uh, the books are extremely cheap, except for a few, uh, a few very classical textbooks and things like that. But come and take a look if you get a chance. Okay. What else, Lance? Uh, a couple things. Um, Saturday was great to have the household paint and I guess chemical disposal they had at Bell Park. A lot of folks out there helping and it was a great opportunity I think for the city to do something beneficial for well, not that we don't do a lot of beneficial things for people that live here but that's one thing that we're always looking for a way not always legally to get rid of especially used cans of paint and such and I actually took advantage of it and went out there I actually dropped off a donuts uh, it was a what they call hungry man's dozen it was missing one but, <laughs> but they seem to appreciate, especially the, uh, the young boys that were working with their mom out there. But that was a great thing, a very beneficial, very good use of our, our budgeted money to do something like that. Uh, on the second hand, it also gave me an opportunity to get rid of some cans of paint so that I don't have to leave those for the next owner of my house. Um, the fan and lifelong love and till death do us part wife of this council member has found it necessary to relocate her business back to the great Virginia. state of Virginia. Common Virginia? Virginia. <laughs> now, haven't been to the place, really looking forward to uh, finding out more about it. Um, so uh, we're in the process of selling a beautiful home that uh, is to be a great find for anyone that's both a really nice home that doesn't miss in great thing um, and I will continue to serve um, until such time that uh, we leave we we're not on a, any strict timeline uh, we do would like to wrap this up by the end of the year um, and I would project probably somewhere this fall maybe middle late fall we'll be uh, packing things up and, and heading back uh, there uh, she needs to do this and I have to question her judgment, but she wanted me to come with her. Uh, but we, we love Milton. Uh, I've loved being on council. I'll continue to serve with uh, all my abilities. And, uh, but, and I will be 
looking at how uh, progresses a lot of things that have been accomplished since uh, uh, come on council. Um, I won't say it due to my my part or any or even Matt's, but that the council together has acted very well. And uh, with the passing of the form based code, the staff has done some wonderful things in support of the city. Um, we can see how those things progress. Uh, the new public works, public uh, safety building that will be built and new council chambers I won't be able to take advantage of. But, but I will be watching because they've got Google Earth and you know, Google's a wonderful thing. <laughs> so anyway, sadness that, and we love, this is the nicest place we've ever lived, but hands down. It would be hard to, to find a place uh, comparable, but but you know, home is where the heart is. So anyway, yeah, well, I just say we <coughs> certainly will will miss you, but to understand if it's a good opportunity, mm -hmm. and uh, I can uh, I can get with Chris and staff, and we'll figure out the logistics and right. and mix that with your time and on uh, what we need to do as as a council. So, <coughs> but uh, we wish certainly. Wish you well, Thank you. Mr. Junior, and look forward to you visiting. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else? Please don't anyone else step out right now. Oh. <laughs> 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 um, Bill? Oh, Joe and Karen Knight represented the uh, city of Milton Saturday at the 61st Old Soldier Day Parade. Great event. I think uh, there was a record turnout typically hotter than blazes, but uh, it's well worth it. Uh, a good event. Tremendous speakers. Uh, retired Colonel Lee Ellis, who was a POW in Vietnam for uh, what, over three years. Uh, great speech. Great folks. Great time. It's great weather. And I'll have to tell uh, maybe what I told Chris earlier today that I uh, I had several people comment because we drove ourselves in the parade and they made a comment about that. And I told them that we were a low budget city up here in Milton <laughs> and we just kind of took care of ourselves and we did not need people to drive us around. So, I like let me, let me, let me, budget rather than low budget. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let, me, let me get this straight. <laughs> I don't know if I like low budget. Let me get this straight. We drove ourselves around in our Mercedes to save money. <laughs> you didn't turn anything in. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, start, turn it over to our city manager for uh, any comments from staff. Yeah, Mayor, I'm not going to follow uh, that with a whole lot tonight other than to say just continue to watch your emails of, as the week progresses on some of the hot topics that right now obviously are making a little bit of news, the least of which is with our ambulance service. Uh, I'll say, and I'll just say publicly, I don't anticipate any uh, lesser service provided here locally. I don't, I don't believe the Georgia market will be affected. I don't want to paint it as a doom and gloom scenario when I truly don't believe it is. Um, so we'll watch that and see what happens and we'll see if the zone decides to do anything. Um, you'll see a little bit uh, also of, of I guess, uh, opposition in the construction of one of the public safety radio system towers in the city of Roswell, partly because of where it's proposed to be placed. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't have a little spillover from that at some point because of our participation in the authority. Um, that's, that's okay. Uh, we'll continue to um, navigate through that and, and work towards the delivery of a good system that's not duplicative of a system that Fulton County builds. That makes absolutely no sense to put two systems on top of each other. So, uh, for, the <clears throat> for the same reason that a lot of these uh, um, public comments are, are happening about this duplication of, of taxes, you know, hey, I'm right there with them. And, and I don't think that should happen just like they don't think it should happen. So. Um, We'll continue to pursue it from an operational perspective. At some point, we might need to put a little, uh, um, we might need to have a little political pressure um, put on Fulton County by our elected officials, and we'll discuss that when the time is right. But I want to, if, if you're starting to hear some of that percolating up, it's not a shock to us. We're watching it. I still think we're on the right course, and I believe um, we'll get to a good product in the end. It's just going to take a couple of bumps before we get there. So that's kind of an update there. Certainly, if you get questions, concerns, comments, please feel free to forward people to me. I'm happy to talk. And frankly, I share the same view that I believe many of them do. So um, I think we can get to a good place in the end. Anybody have any questions that I can answer for, for you? I got a question along those lines. And <coughs> reading that, that information you sent out this weekend on that, I mean, if I read it correctly and I think I've followed it enough, is, is we were taking the initiative as the five cities or four, I guess, up here um, to do something because Fulton County wasn't 
and now they're looking like the good guys. Oh, we're, we're doing this, and, and the cities are looking like the bad guys. Is that even that's, though that's kind of what's playing out we've at had this to, point? We've had to take the lead in it. That's right. You know, in the absence of doing something, we acted um, because the time was right to act because we were having system failures. In the in the absence of Fulton County's action, we we did act. If you go back to November the 9th of 2012, you remember I brought a letter to the council meeting that was a product of Bill Edwards at the commission uh, seeking a response from the North Fulton cities of is you in or is you out? And you know there was two options to check. One was we wanted to be in with a county system. The second was that we were gonna form as the cities and seek to partner with them on uh, avoiding redundancy. Um, we checked that second blank and uh, the indication on that letter was that they would prepare their RFP accordingly based upon the responses. Quite clearly, they didn't um, at this point. So I don't know if that letter was issued in bad faith or if they just chose not to uh, digest what it had to say. Um, but uh, there were m multiple opportunities to get the right information to make the best good decision. So yes, it is playing out as all of a sudden we went forward and started a good process and oh, by the way, here they are, now they want to build the whole thing. Um, it doesn't make good sense. And, and, they, and they had better data than to have to make that decision. So. Um, you know, we'll, I still think that we can get to a place, there, there's options. I still think we can get to a place. I haven't lost hope, and I'm not even close to losing hope yet that we'll find a way to make it work. Okay. Anything else? Good. Great. If, um, I'm, guys, thank you for bearing with me over the last couple of weeks. I don't want to really go into a whole lot of the public record as to why I was gone, but uh, my dad's doing well. I appreciate you um, working with me to uh, be with him when he needed uh, when, when he needed on progress forward, so that's that's good news, so thanks. Okay. I'll open up for a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss litigation and land acquisition. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous.
I sent him a picture of the tax for Kansas and said, does this not make an excuse? He was on Meet the Press this weekend. Saxby. Aye. 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 Move to adjourn. So move. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. That's okay. We're we missed out. a second on that, but. Second. Give me a motion, a second to adjourn the meeting. So moved. So moved. Second. 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 You're second, the first and the second. Yeah. Second. We have a first and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.